We have John Turmel, who, now John, is this your 74th? Yes. Since number 74? And 72 losses in one tie. Excellent. <laughs> Mark is a Guinness Book of World Record holder. It's a pleasure to have him. Uh, pardon me, John is a Guinness Book of World Record holder for elections run in and lost. And he's with us tonight on the big program. Mr. Turmel, you have things that you are very passionate about, and I've seen documentaries about the things that you're passionate about. My, my question is why? Why are you passionate about the things you're passionate about? And what about it makes it so important that you want to share with our with, with, the, with the community? Wow. Well, first of all, why would I run in 74 elections? Because I like losing? No. I'm passionate about the fact that poor people are being ripped off by a system they don't understand, and I figured out. And I know how to fix, and they can't see it. And Jesus said, when it comes to the fixing the system, they're going to forever be hearing without hearing, and seeing without seeing or understanding. And boy, was he right. And uh, so anyway, look, I'm a professional poker player, professional blackjack player. I was teaching assistant of the mathematics, a gambling course. I got a free ride through life. I can walk into any card game and walk out with all the money. Why do you think I live beside the Brantford Casino? You got no one to hold them and no one to. And I got the book Play Hold 'em Poker Like a Bookie because I'm the best limit hold 'em poker player in the world. So, with a free ride in life, why would I keep wanting to be a loser in politics? It's because I want to win fair and square. And I don't like the idea of loan sharks taken from the poor and doing nothing to earn it. I gotta earn my money. Every working man's gotta earn his money, except for the loan sharks, the guys who get to run the cash and the big piles of money. And I don't think that was fair. So I ran in my first election to legalize gambling, yes, but within 40 days, I'd figured out what causes poverty, loan sharking, and I said, gee, we gotta run men on like poker chips. No interest, then there's no inflation. And so for the next 74 election, my goal has been to do banking on earth like it is in heaven, with no loan sharking. That is a good why answer. <laughs> that was why. No usury. That's it. Chris, you have, you have. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Turmel, the same question. What role do you see the church having in Brantford becoming a better place to live? Well, I can tell you that um, pastors and preachers of other religions uh, have organized time banks for their communities so they got all the ladies willing to babysit to list their names so they could all call each other and then they gave them IOUs to keep track of their hours and uh, down in El Paso, Texas they started a time bank, time dollar system, so nuns, not priests, but nuns which matched up every new mama in the barrio with an old mama who knew how to take care of the babies and they could pay them with an IOU for time later owed by mama and baby to the old mama and child mortality went down. In Germany the first let's was started by a Catholic priest. In Toronto the first let's was started by an Anglican priest, Reverend Lindsay King. It's been supported by Islam, it's been supported in Latin America. Everywhere they have community currencies Clergies have helped participate and organize the databases, except Canada. So, anyway, now, they said to Jesus, and it was the big thing because this led software here, local employment training software. It's software for training employment locally. If you Google for anti-poverty software, it comes up. And if you Google for anti-poverty engineer, I come up because I finance that software. So, the point is, now I had an engineering prof who used to talk about computer programs and talk about the little man in the computer who'd run around and do this here, then do that board. there, do That's that there. No, 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 it was Professor Schneider 30 oh, years ago. He was also the gambling professor. And he talked about the little man in the computer. Well, let's, the little man in the computer running around doing our banking with no, lo no loan shark, that's Jesus, come back! Jesus, the accountant in the software, doing your accounting for you with no usury, banking on heaven as it should be on, uh, sorry, on earth as it should be in heaven. This is why it's difficult to be a pastor. So that's why I got to the United Nations talking about this, and they passed Resolution C6 for a Unilex time-based currency. You can pay back in cash or working it off in time. So, Excellent. look up time standard of money, and that makes people equal with a chunk of gold at the bank for collateral. 
Did you just say Jesus is an accountant? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Thomas 95, Jesus said, if you have money, do not lend it out at interest. <laughs> so why do you think all the religious preachers are ashamed because they only discovered it in 48 and went, oops, we're investing all our people's money and now we just discovered Jesus said loan sharking is bad. Maybe we ought to change the definition from usury being loan sharking to usury being too much loan sharking. Okay. They've changed it. They've said too much loan sharking is the problem now. Jesus said any loan sharking is the problem. This is the this is what happens in the, the newer translations. And it gets all well, I have a no, unique no, exegesis. Look up the word, and it ain't Jesus. Exegesis. Chris, what role do you see the, the church having in, in a city going forward? What's the, what's the church's role? I, I, I've never pictured Jesus as an accountant. Never in my life at all. Little spectacle. Check out my website. 500 lines of poetry on Jesus. That's funny now. Um, hey, beat up the bankers in the temple. Why? You want that, a physical that's assault? A good, that's a good point. I know. That is a good point. So that's what role does the church have going forward? <laughs> yeah. we want the church, another, it's a church question, the church has a churchy negative reputation in some places. How do you, how do you make, how do you change it if there's a fear of spirituality? Mr. Turmel. Who cares about reputation? They used to joke in Ottawa that my jail cell had a revolving door. That's how many times I got put in jail. So, of course, I had an accordion to play concerts and they gave me community service. So, when I got busted with the biggest game in house in Canadian history, 200 hours community service with an accordion. When I got busted with seven pounds of marijuana on Parliament Hill for the Prime Minister, 100 hours community service. But I got 4,000 charges dropped. Hey, look for it, MedPod engineer. I'm a believer in herbal, not chemical. And besides, it regrows brain cells, neurogenesis, kills cancer. Oh, bite brain cells, that's why I'm so sharp and they're so, so how dull. So the church's <laughs> reputation <laughs> change in the city? How, how, can, how can you make people not afraid of spirit, uh, churches and spirituality, people of you know, spiritual bent? Stop asking them for money. No, 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 I, I didn't really mean that. I just meant that, look, what are you doing the good to help them, other than tell them pray and hope for a better world later? Why don't you help them have a better world now? That organize a time bank like the guy in Germany did. Get all the unemployed mothers to organize themselves so child mortality goes down without any help from government that's not coming anyway. If you're not going to organize yourselves, you deserve to suffer. And I, as for, so I'm saying do something useful for your people and then forget about what things look like. Help them for real. And being an advocate for more charity ain't helping them. But being an advocate for more jobs. And quickly, I want to pay people with bus rides, bus credits, to give them jobs, clear the snow, clean the parks. So that's my stick. I want to use bus tickets to pay people with. Up their bus credits on their bus passes. And I got a video on my site, johntramill.com slash busbucks.mpg, where I ask kids at the bus station, will you work for 12 bus bucks an hour? None said no. All right. You should say that. Website slower. Okay. johntramill.com slash busbucks.mpg. Mr. Turmel, how do you change a culture of bullying in an elementary school? Well, first of all, how many of the rich kids are bullying the poor kids for their allowance? I don't think that's, I don't think that's actually the, the yeah. thing. Like, because in, in each school, the schools are in different demographics. Yeah. And so... Uh, so it, again, it, my question was, how many, compared to how many poor kids will bully the rich kids for their allowance? How many rich kids do you think bully the poor kids for their no allowance? All right? So my point is, there's inequity. These kids are broke. They're poor, they're pissed off, I don't blame them. They see the buses leaving on tours and guided tours and trips, empty seats and they can't go. Go see my video at YouTube, Lord Rothschild and John Turmel, where I tell him, he says the poor should tighten their belts. I said, you pig, because you had all the goddamn tickets. I couldn't go on those trips when I was a kid because the rich kids had all the tickets and they couldn't use all the seats. Chris. And that's what I'm mad about. Poor kids who can't go on trips on empty buses because they got no money, they got no credit. That's why I got mad. 
So why use? I'm gonna stop you because we're right. spot on topic. So I'm gonna keep. Are you, are you, this is the wrong crowd. Use the oh, word, I'm sorry. Word yeah, you've lost the church just, crowd. Just, I'm gonna turn. I'm sorry. Just, I'm gonna take that one. Back. No, I'm gonna give you that. What did I say? Goddamn what? Shh. That's the one. That hey, if you don't tell me God doesn't damn poverty and misery, that's not the God right. I worship. So let's go back we'll to give him elementary him. school bullying. Um, so Chris, no, I said it's a function of poverty. Why do you think that's wrong? Oh, it's great. Give them jobs with bus bucks cleaning the parks full time on weekends. They can spend the bus bucks in the community serve in the community centers with the rich kids, and they ain't gonna be out there making trouble. Thank you, Chris. We're, we're talking about uh, in elementary schools, and it's Give something, money. something that's increasing. <laughs> it's something that you're gonna do afterwards if you don't win. John, 45 seconds, and no Brantford Buck discussion. Go. Uh, well, talk about. <laughs> Talk about knowing what it feels like to wonder what you're going to do after you do it. <laughs> no one's had more experience than knowing what i got to do next. So i go back to poker. I would get ready for number 75. Because it doesn't matter what database. If it's a municipal database, I install bus bucks. A provincial database, a federal database. I even got invited to the UN in 2000 to do the Unilets resolution for a worldwide time bank database. Doesn't matter what size the database, I'll just keep trying till I get to do the upgrade, then I'll move to the next level up until the world is done. Banking is done on earth as it is in heaven. Perfect. Just so you know, John, you may have had the most uh, air time in the, in the chat room, just so you know. Okay. A lot Chris, of that. <laughs> Chris, you're up. You know, I guess if you're a professional loser, then you're actually a winner, aren't you? You are a winner. Because that's what you want to do. I'm not a professional loser, no sir. If I ever get elected, I reprogram the system, so I'm serious. <laughs> it hurt me every time they rejected me, and people say, your idea's been rejected 74 times. We don't want interest-free loans. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm sure you know the experience. I think we've even spoken about this. It's uh, uh, it's humbling, sure. and it is something that you well, either make the decision that you're humbled. Well, not everyone. Okay, that's right. <laughs> but, I ain't humbled. <laughs> but, <laughs> I don't think I don't even think you can spell it. No. There's a, you get humbled by that, and you have to learn from the experience. God, we are so grateful that you raise up great leaders. God, we believe that you're making a great, strong city here in Brantford. And so we choose to bless uh, those that would rise up and lead. And we thank you for them. We, we just declare your blessing upon them and our city. And uh, let, your, let your kingdom come in Brantford as it is in heaven. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. That was for you, John. Yes. Good show! <laughs> Hey, this has been amazing. Uh, this is the first time Brantford has had an online interactive uh, debate, and I'll guarantee you it's not going to be the last. I've had a blast, and guys, I want to thank you all for being here. It was Thanks a pleasure, and it's been a pleasure getting to know you more, and I wish you all the best along the campaign trail.